All right, guys, this is episode 17 of Pardon the Dashboard. I'm your host, Sergeant Merrill, along with my co-host, Sweat. And uh, his uh, nickname for now has been Sexy Sweat. Because of his <laughs> Thanks, photo he has graced us with. Uh, we also have reoccurring guest, The Aviator. How's it going? Hey, howdy. And uh, also as our guest today, we have The Blind Spot. Very mm-hmm. interesting guest. Is, uh, is also known as Christian. How's it going, man? Hey, not too bad. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Now, uh, an interesting thing about blind spot is that you are legally blind. Yeah, correct? that's correct. Not not totally blind, just legally blind. So, uh, that means that uh, I, I can't see for crap, essentially. I uh, can't drive a car, do any of that that kind of stuff. But a lot of people seem to get confused. I'm not totally blind. so. But yeah, yeah, that uh, makes, makes first-person shooters uh, difficult, that's for sure. So you run your own channel. Right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, on YouTube, do uh, Call of Duty commentary uh, as best, as often as I can, and uh, do some Minecraft and some other stuff too. So, so what do you think makes your channel more appealing than, than someone else's? What uh, makes it different? It, uh, well, I, first of all, I, you know, it's it's one thing to kind of bring the uh, the legally blind gaming aspect um, to the forefront. You know, there's uh, the people I've met in through my channel over the last few months. It's just been unbelievable. Uh, even uh, MLG gamers that are that are legally blind and have visual difficulties, people with ocular albinism, you name it. You know, blindness kind of runs the gamut of a, uh, a whole plethora of things. It's not just, you know, seeing black, so to speak, as the stereotype goes. So just kind of bringing some awareness to, to, the, to that side of things and, and just having fun, yeah. And my good looks. I mean, I mean who wouldn't <laughs> want to check on my channel? <laughs> Don't you think you'd have... Like, uh, that'd be a whole different way. You just say, you know, hey, I'm legally blind. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, completely blind. Not legally blind, but I'm completely blind. And, you know, I play video games and commentate. Like, don't you want to try that sometime? <laughs> how the audience yeah, I, reacts to it? I, <laughs> it would piss me off if I got killed by him. I'm not going to lie. I've played play with Blind Spot a good bit. And one time he got dogs. And then he claimed to be completely blind. And he's like, yeah, you guys <laughs> suck so much. I was blind and got dogs. <laughs> it's just bad, man. And, it didn't, and I didn't get it in theater mode. What a bummer. God, <laughs> man. Always That's record awful. live. <laughs> My seeing eye dogs went bye-bye. <laughs> so uh, explain like the, the daily challenge that you have with playing Call of Duty. Um, essentially, and uh, in one of my videos, I kind of go into detail and I show some pictures actually of my retina compared to a normal retina. And I have essentially what, what you would consider a blind spot. The, the central portion of my retina is damaged um, beyond repair. There is no surgery. There is no medication or anything because um, oftentimes I get asked that um, to correct it. So it, it kind of causes – when I look directly at something, like if I were to look at the screen right now and look at Eric's face, um, it literally disappears. Uh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just it, it, it's literally a blind spot in my central vision. So I have to uh, completely, uh, I, I can only use my peripheral vision. So I, I sit super close to the TV, uh, you know, just a few inches away from the TV, and uh, kind of my peripheral vision scans for movement. And when I see something move, I kind of point at it and, and hope I hit it. So <laughs> you just blast away, huh? Yeah, exactly. Right. He is oh. the king of the 8K21 with extended mags. Awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that right now. The freaking baller, extended mag champion. So, what I, strategy would you recommend to other uh, legally blind players that are trying to get better at Call of Duty? Well, I guess first and foremost, um, don't let that stop you. You know, for the longest time, I, o- I only started playing first-person shooters when Modern Warfare 2 came out, and primarily because my son started playing. And uh, because I always thought, you know what, I'm just not good enough. There's no way I can compete with these guys, right, and, and do well. And even, you know, on a previous part of the Dashboard episode, you guys talked about the, the accessibility of, of Call of Duty, and that's why it's such a, such a giant in the industry. And it's really true. I can pick up the controller as a legally blind guy, and and be as Eric put it, be an occasional hero, and uh, and that's you know that's what's great about it. So first and foremost, don't let it stop you. Don't don't think because you have a condition or a problem that you can't go do it. Just go do it and have fun, and you'll eventually get the hang of it. Uh, I get dominated so many times. I mean, it, it takes me a long time to get a gameplay. So um, as far as uh, tips and tricks, I think. Uh, Maybe they should watch your channels for tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's actually interesting that you, you touched on something. And I, I've had this conversation with Christian or Blindspot before, but I, I'm a, a somewhat disabled person. I mean, I'm, I can walk around, I can run, I can do things now, but I've got 29 broken bones, including four in my back. And uh, that's wow. that's a lot to, to kind of overcome as a 25-year-old guy. And being a gamer now, which I didn't start gaming until after I broke my back, uh, I was 17. And uh, being able to game allows me to have that feeling occasionally of being a hero, of doing something that's, you know, it's it's 
amazing. You know, you yeah. pull off that 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 clutch four piece, and you just you feel good about what you were able to accomplish. And all it really took was moving some sticks around, but it definitely took some skill. So I think there's something that's really special about leveling the playing field and not letting physicality necessarily get in the way of being special. So yeah. I applaud it. Yeah. See me, yeah. I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to the. Uh, to our, our next topic here. And um, I told Blindspot, I think, three hours ago that this was going to be a topic. And <laughs> you just about know everything about it now. It's pretty awesome how much you did, how much you researched it. But we're talking about Bill S.978. And yeah, like uh, this could change. Like this could change the industry if this goes through. And this is uh, this kind of a 10-strike system to where uh, live streaming or putting out YouTube videos on games could earn you a strike and 10 strikes. And what is it? What type of, uh, is it a yeah, misdemeanor it, or is it further than that? I, I'm definitely not an expert, but, but I definitely did some research and what they're doing is they're taking the current copyright laws that are already in place and t taking it from a civil situation into a criminal situation. So they're really, um, making the penalty more harsh and, and what it is, it's, it's you can get up to five years in jail for, for live streaming, period. And uh, of any type of, um, any public performance of copyrighted works is the way the bill is written. And the bill is in Congress right now. And the issue is that the bill isn't intended to necessarily stop Sergeant Merrill from live streaming Call of Duty. The bill is intended to stop, uh, you know, uh, this user and this user from streaming TV shows and movies. And I think that's really what it's, what it's aimed for. The problem is... They're so ignorant that they, they, they just word it so broadly that it covers even the three-year-old in your living room singing Lady Gaga, you know, that you can no longer put on YouTube because you don't own the copyrights to Lady Gaga's song. And so they've really just made it too broad. And, and what needs to happen is, is the wording needs to be changed, hopefully, before it goes into law. So, Yeah, what, what I equate this to is, uh, I mean, back when you had the VHS tapes and you had that warning as soon as you put the VHS tape inside of there, and, uh, you know, saying this, this is an FBI mandate, you cannot copy this material. You know, I think they're trying to do that uh, through live streams. And, and the problem is that it's, it's not the same concept. When somebody copies a movie, they copy the product. There's no reason for someone, once they have that, to go out and buy it. But if someone's watching on YouTube or watching on a live stream, a game, they don't have that product. They're not getting the enjoyment that they would if they owned that product. It, it's promoting it, if anything. So, well, I and as it stands today, and, and I sent you um, a blog post uh, yesterday, and I'll get into that in a second, but as it stands today, um, Activision could contact Machinima, could contact you or me or anyone directly and say cease and desist on, from a civil standpoint. They could ask us to stop. Um, but they don't because of the, the massive amount of, of marketing and PR that, that what we do and what all these YouTubers do uh, gains these companies. So I really, like I said earlier, the intention is not to put the kibosh on, on, on video game commentary. It's just inadvertently doing that. But the blog post that I saw yesterday was from uh, World of Notch, which uh, Notch is the owner and creator of Minecraft. And he posted specifically about this bill and, and said, you know, he's been getting a lot of messages, you know, from people that are concerned. And, and one of the things he loves about Minecraft is, is watching Let's Plays and watching uh, people's creations. I mean, that if you think about it, without YouTube, uh, Minecraft wouldn't be near what it is today. Yeah, no be. offense to Minecraft. I love the game, but honestly, that game is way more fun to watch than to play. <laughs> Unless you're playing with someone. And, I mean, I love, to, I love playing it. Like, I, I find myself sucked in for hours at a time, but like, I like watching you play it with your daughter way more than I like watching, you know, like playing myself. <laughs> Truly, it's, uh, I love it. It's 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 good times. But what what he posted in the blog post at the end, and this is the key, and this is what it really it, it made me feel better. Um, he said, "Look, if if this bill passes, he said, video game companies such as ours, including us, will alter our terms of service to make sure that this can continue, because they realize the power and the potential. Of, you know, this free marketing, this free advertising. They realize that. So, so I don't think. I mean, a lot of people you see a lot of videos out there on YouTube right now, kind of alarmist esque." videos of people screaming, hey, you know, and, and I think it's important. I think as a community, we need to stick together and make our voice known and say, hey, you know, um, reword this thing, you know, and, and whatnot. But, but nonetheless, I think, the, I think that our industry or, or the gaming industry understands, um, you know, the benefit of, of YouTube commentators. So, Yeah. Well, how do you think people can get involved to, to stop it from going forward? 
Uh, there is a there is a website, and I'll give you the link. You can put it in the in the show notes or the description. Uh, yeah, definitely. To, it's it's called Demand Progress, and it's essentially a petition um, that you can uh, you know enter your information, sign, and um, it goes to the congressman. There's kind of a pre written letter that goes to the congressman expressing you know your concern for the bill. So definitely uh, click that link, sign up, and go for it. But I'm curious, Eric. Um, you had mentioned in the, in the pre show um, you you had some thoughts on this. I was kind of curious what you had to say on it. You know, I actually think you kind of hit on it with the way it should have been hit on is simply that video game companies, as a rule, need to have their information spread, especially smaller companies. I mean, people like Activision, they don't necessarily need people on YouTube to promote this, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. hurt. You know, it certainly doesn't hurt that we're still promoting, you know, World at War. I I went out and bought it because all my friends were playing it again. And, you know, I see them on YouTube. Oh, that looks like a fun game. I never played World at War. I'm going to go buy it and try it out. You know, there's something to that. Um, that especially I think as our society starts moving more and more toward a very open, very, uh, kind of showy society where we're trying to share things constantly, it's going to do a lot, you know, it's going to do a lot for us. And, and the concept of not allowing people to share their experiences with a game or with any kind of a video experience is going to be silly. You know, we're going to, over time, these companies will find new ways to monetize and for right now, the government is scared because they're afraid that you know they're, they're the people who are greasing their checks basically aren't making the money they were before. But they just haven't found new ways to monetize yet. You know the ways mm-hmm. that Justin TV and YouTube are monetizing through ads now. Yeah, it's great monetization. And heck, if you know you put up a Modern Warfare Five gameplay someday in the future, perhaps Activision will get a piece of the ad sales that were that go on that on that ad. That, that would make yeah. sense to me. Well, mm-hmm. we have to move on. We have to move on to our next Indeed. topic. So Indeed. let's go ahead and do that. Our next topic is the $1 million tournament that Activision is going to be putting up in the near future. And uh, it's organized kind of uh, kind of strangely right now. They're being a little vague. But what we do know um, is that they're going to be doing pre-qualifying rounds for Black Ops and that the actual tournament uh, is rumored to be taking place on Modern Warfare 3. Oh, jealous. Over $1 million <laughs> in prizes being given away. This is the largest competitive event ever to be uh, hosted in general, not not to mention hosted by the developers themselves. What do y'all think about this? <sighs> Man, I wish I could get Buzz going for a game, this is the way to do it. Exactly. Yeah, and, exactly. and it's already got the mo- um, I mean, more buzz about it than what any game ever. I, isn't, I think pre-orders have already out, you know, mm-hmm. outdone uh, any pre-order for any game ever before, or whatnot, at least any other Call of Duty game, if I'm not mistaken. And that's Modern Warfare 3 pre-orders. So, um, yeah, if they want to, I mean, just continue with that. I mean, they want to, they want to also break, you got to think of the amount of advertising that EA is putting in the battlefield three and what EA's already made, you know, the bold claims. So, I mean, this is without going directly at EA, I mean, and just promoting their own product. I mean, this is, this seems like it's an, an awesome way to, you know, yeah. continue to do that. At first I thought that they were doing this a little late in the lifespan of black ops, but then I found out that they might actually be hosting the actual tournament with Modern Warfare 3, and I thought, well, well that's genius. What yeah. a way to sell the game. What a way to, to build hype on the game than to take the best of the best of Black Ops and, and put them into Modern <clears throat> Warfare 3 and see what happens. Dude, it's going to be really... Uh, go ahead, man. I, I'm just—I'm still sitting here sweating in my head, going, "I wish I was good enough to play. <laughs> I no wish chance. I was good enough to play." I didn't have to tell everybody I was in your head, Eric. We already know I was. In <laughs> I'm looking at your picture, baby. Ooh. <laughs> I just wish I could be there. Uh, I know the events in September. It's in in Los Angeles. Call of Duty XP, I think, is what they've uh, branded it. And yeah, I mean, they're releasing. Um, the multiplayer side of Modern Warfare 3 at the opening ceremonies, and then having the finals on Modern Warfare 3. I, absolutely genius. I think you hit the nail on the head, Sweat. It's it's a, a PR masterpiece, I think. Yeah. yeah, and I was so worried about Modern Warfare 3 that they weren't building enough hype for it, that they weren't going to match up to the amount of funds that Battlefield 3 was putting into their hype. And then they go and do something like this, and I'm like, well, i just put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because, yeah, they, I mean, you didn't hear anything about it. I mean, it, it seemed like they weren't even concerned with it or, you know, maybe they didn't have anything behind it at all. And then they come out with this and it's like, oh, OK, I see what yes. you did there. I really hope they, they put the, I mean, you know, I don't even need to hope. I know that they're going to put an awesome amount of production value into it and uh, that it's going to be very accessible to everybody. And uh, I'm really excited for it. You have any other thoughts before we move on to our next topic? No, I'm good. All right. Well, uh, our next topic, it's not quite a $1 million tournament, but it was the uh, the interesting <laughs> $10,000 commentator uh, tournament that took place uh, at the hands of Alki David, 
who is the owner of Film On and Battle Cam. And uh, to kind of put some context into this situation, uh, Game Dunzo hosted a commentator showdown a couple weeks ago. And it was meant to be hosted or meant to be put onto uh, Film On or streamed onto FilmOn.com. And it was crashed by the pure amount of people that went to go see it. It, it got crashed. And I, I think the owner was worried that people weren't going to be coming back to that website. So he came up with this crazy idea to fly these commentators. We're talking about Woody's Gamertag, X-Jaws, Wings of Redemption, um, White Boy 7th Street. Fly them to, to his mansion <laughs> in Beverly Hills and host this, uh, this, com- or this showdown where the winner takes all, $10,000. What do you all think about this? Did you all watch it? Uh, I did watch it. I watched it uh, actually just a couple days ago or whenever. I think Woody might have put it up on his channel. And uh, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, from an entertainment standpoint, it was pretty entertaining. Uh, you know, seeing X Jaws go head to head against Wings of Redemption, that was kind of fun. I mean, as, a, as not only a YouTube commentator myself, but, one, you know, I, I spend a lot of time on YouTube watching commentators as well. And it was really enjoyable to kind of watch them. And that being said, I think the production value could have been a little higher. Uh, they oh, used yeah. some green screens, and I don't know, it just looked a little amateurish. And and I know they threw it together real quick, so that might be the reason they weren't able to... It just seemed a little disorganized and things like that, but uh, but essentially, I think it's a great concept. I think they're uh, they're planning a team-based one next, is that right? Correct me if I'm wrong. That's what they're talking about, uh, but that's Keemstar talking, so I have no idea if there's actually you know any validity behind it or not. Mm-hmm. Now, we have to go ahead and say that X-Jaws did win this. He mm-hmm. did, and he, he won it very well. I have to say, he definitely won it well. Uh, having watched this, like, there was a lot of drama behind it. People saying there was screen watching, there was this, there was that. And I have, you know, I know, uh, let's see, I know I know everyone in the, uh, in the competition personally. So I can honestly say that they've told me that screen watching was allowed. They, they said, you know, the screens are side by side. That was a bad mistake, but they are. So we're going we're gonna to screen watch. It's what's going to happen. And that's why there were so many different wall bangs and things like that that were just, it was a little bit challenging. You know, it was definitely a little bit, uh, you know, a little interesting to watch. And it pissed off a lot of people because people figured that uh, it was something that had to do with cheating. But really, it was, you know, all part of the game. And uh, I think it was a great way to get a lot of buzz going. But I do have to agree with Christian, the uh, the kind of video quality as a videographer, photographer myself, who kind of prides himself in quality, I was freaking out the whole time. Stop shaking the camera! Stop shaking the camera! <laughs> yes, and the yeah. and the guy that that uh, that organized it, Alki David, this this eccentric billionaire, he did a really good job of uh, promoting this. What's that commercial where it has the billionaire and and he has the little baby giraffe, the little miniature draft and <laughs> has it uh, direct TV case, direct the direct TV commercial exactly yeah. that's exactly what I thought of when I saw his promotion for this <laughs> and he had his little dog sitting on him and he was petting yeah. it was I was hilarious. like, "That's that's hilarious." He, he, I he challenge could, you. Yes, <laughs> it's like Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> he could play to that so much more. I, I really think that that's a that's a really good uh, character. That, or it may just be him, but it, it's a, it was a really good promotion. And I'd like to see something like that in the future when he decides to do something again. It, it was really funny, especially uh, when you see uh, Woody's gamer tags uh, response to it. It was it was really mm-hmm. good. Well, un- unlike unlike Eric, um, I don't know anyone um, <laughs> that competed in that competition. And I got to say, as a as a fan, also of, of many commentators, uh, like I was saying earlier, I was shocked uh, to see how quiet White Boy was. I really expected him to be uh, much louder and, and, and kind of boisterous. And just to <laughs> just to see him interacting there, it was it was kind of neat. I have to say, man, I, I I actually slept in the same room with White Boy. Uh, <laughs> For, no, I know it's a little creepy. Oh, definitely <laughs> something I would, I would <laughs> jump in right openly admit. Hey, yeah, man, everyone. I'm an honest guy. I'm an honest guy. We just got back uh, last weekend from the paintball event in Chicago, the big commentator paintball event. We had tons of subs out to hang out with us. We just, It was amazing. It was a really great time up at CPX Sports. And I ended up rooming with White Boy. And, uh, you know, people say he's shy. People say he's boisterous. Honestly, the guy is just a mellow gentleman. I, and mind you, I would be the first one to say that before I met him, before I knew him, I was not a huge white boy fan because I really did not know what to think of him. I just saw what he'd done to my friends, you know, or whatnot. He uses YouTube as nothing at all but business. Mm-hmm. He's smart. 
He thinks of the internet as a business station. And in, in personal relationships, he'll be clear in person. But the internet's the internet. It's totally different personalities for him. And uh, I, I have to say, I have been converted. I am a big white boy fan. I actually I actually watch his videos, like them, favorite them. I'm a fan. I like him now. <laughs> He's a really cool guy. I, I have say, to say, really Eric, is. I'm worried about you, okay? First we find <laughs> out first we find out that you were sleeping in the same bed as Mark Durka. <laughs> hey, that was now. just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awkward. I'll uh, I'll lead off with this because the Uncharted 3 beta came out and it's a multiplayer beta. All right, it's it's PS3 exclusive and uh I'm I'm really new to the PS3, so uh I had a pretty steep learning curve. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a, I used to play PlayStation 2 uh exclusively, but for the past I'd say 5 years I've been on Xbox. So Trying to jump back and um, and first getting into a new system, uh, PS3, and then a new beta, which kind of had its own problems because there was a little bit of um, lag issues. There were a little bit of connection issues and finding a game uh, because I tried it again the, the, the minute it was available. And then the fact that it's a third person shooter is um, is also something I'm really not used to. I really haven't been that much of a fan of. But, you know, I wanted to try all of this. And I'd say all three together was um a little bit too much of a learning curve. So, I don't know, guys. What are your thoughts? I don't know if any of y'all have played Uncharted 3, but really on all of it, I mean, what would you think about, you know, jumping to a new console or even just jumping to a different type of genre, you know, the third-person shooter, which is, I'm going to be honest, to me, it's a big difference than, than yeah, just regular first-person. And perhaps I'm the worst person to talk about Uncharted 3 because I don't own a PS3. So let's go ahead and throw that out there right now. But I will say that I have a very challenging time with third-person shooters if they're not RPGs. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Played, uh, has anybody played any, any at least extensively Gears stuff? I know that uh, both of you guys have played some Gears, haven't you? Yes, and I have a, I have a challenge with it. I really do. Uh, it's... Uh, it's just it's just something very very different, and I mean that's just the best critique I can give for it. It's uh, it's it's totally different from doing first person shooters, and um, yeah, your your flow is a lot different. I guess that's what you were called your your flow, your rotation on on how you kill move kill move. It's all totally different, and I think uh, sweat you, the problem you may be having is is exactly that with Uncharted Three trying to apply first person shooter strategies to a third person shooter. It it just never goes through well. No, it certainly hasn't with me, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I think I want to see the... one of Sweat's gameplays. I really do at this point. No, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you don't. Christian, go ahead, man. Well, I, I played through the Gears 2 uh, campaign, a lot of it anyways. I don't, I don't think I ever finished it. And I tried a little bit of the multiplayer, um, but, uh, but I completely agree with Sergeant Man. I don't own a PS3 either, so I, I can't speak to Uncharted either. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a different world. It's a completely different world. That being said, I definitely want to check. Uh, Gears 3 looks awesome from what I've seen so far. Uh, I'm really excited for that to come out and, and try try the third, third person angle again and, and see if I can, you know, maybe invest some more time into it. Uh, like you said, Sweat, you know, there's such a, a strong learning curve and you're just so tempted to just take the controller and throw it out the window and, and, and you know, not sit back down and put, put the time into it. So I think maybe through some dedication, I might be able to pick it up. But we'll have to now, see. Now, just because I know I'm going to get crucified like I I always do when I bring up a topic that not all of us are ex extremely experienced with. Uh, Sweat, what good can you say about Uncharted Three? Oh, I mean, just from what uh, from what I've gathered from the guys who played Uncharted Two, they've made a lot of changes, they made a lot of strides with it, and they just continue to develop it. I mean, I didn't talk to anybody who didn't enjoy it, you know, other than the fact that you know it's a beta, so there's not as much you're not offered everything that uh, that they've said about you know the multiplayer and. And um, there were some issues with connection and whatnot, but, you know, from everything that I've heard and everyone that I've talked to, you know, the story uh, is supposed to be, it, the whole Uncharted story is supposed to be, you know, take up right where it left off and be a great story. The gameplay is supposed to be nothing but improvement. And, you know, it's, it, so everything that I experienced as far as trouble can be expected from somebody uh, that's playing a beta and that, you know, has spent so many count, uh, countless hours. And actually, I guess you can count them because Black Ops does keep count of how many dates I've spent <laughs> on the game yeah. but you know it just because it's my struggles doesn't mean there's anything wrong with, with the game I've heard nothing but really good reviews from the normal PS3 guys um Nizu uh one of Optimus's buddies you guys know him um posted up an 82 and 2 gameplay Dang. on there um wow my, my buddy over here when we play regular team that De deathmatch my roommate can put up a consistent 20 and 10 20 and 6 scores you know stuff like that you know because those guys are just used to it so 
yeah. you know, I, to, I understand where you're coming from because I know how people, you know, they want to they want to bash us because we're talking about it and we don't all have the experience. But you know, we can at least try to talk about it, you know, objectively. And I and I do think that absolutely, I've heard nothing but good things about the game. I was just telling you guys my particular struggles with it. All right. Well, I think we're going way past our, our time limit that I that I try to keep this thing to. Do you all have anything else you want to put out before we end this episode? Um, well, I guess I just want to say thanks a lot for having me on. It's been a blast. Uh, you guys are a really fun hangout with, so so I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks problem. for stopping by, Christian. Good right. time. You too, Eric. You too, Eric. <laughs> yeah, great to be here, man. Great to be here. All right, guys. As I always say, this is a group effort, and, and it, it it really is. I know I'm not I'm not just being cheesy when I say that. A lot of different people help out with part of the dashboard. Uh, I'm I'm really disorganized <laughs> when when I start these episodes, and these guys here can attest to that. So I appreciate everybody's uh, help that goes into this podcast, and um, and also be sure that you check out the sponsors. Uh, we have right now we have. Uh, Off Duty Gamers, we have Yosh.com, and we also have Game Dunzo. They're all awesome in helping me get this going every week, and uh, I really hope you guys check them out. And if you're interested in becoming a sponsor yourself, uh, there should be some information in the upper right hand corner, and be sure to check that out. That's all I have here, guys, for episode 17. This is Sar Merrill, out here.